Chip. Oh, without a doubt. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Watch your language. There's a woman in the studio. <laughs> Let's welcome back. Jamie Lynn hey, Singer, what's going everybody. On? How are you? How are you? I'm sure you I'm sure Jamie, I can't hear her. What is she saying? What are you saying? I'm sorry. I thought I was going to be on the phone with you. No. I didn't know you guys were here. We're oh, here. We're here. I just like think you're New York. We live here now. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome. We've been here for a little over a year now. Thank you. We're having a great time. Yeah, you've been on our show in New York. Last yeah. time uh, Cutter was here with you, I think. Yeah. And I know you've been on Solo before. Welcome back. Thank you. Just talking about the holidays. Yeah. Did there you some, hear? Uh, some asshole that <sighs> says the worst. some guy going to the mall going to tell kids there's no Santa. Oh, you didn't what? see this? Oh, no, pull it up. I spent so long since I've even seen you this. Got, you got to see this. Talk about aggravating. This is the most aggravating thing. He's a guy named Pastor Dave, right? I want to punch And he's from one of those like ch- churches. Is he a legit pastor? I don't know. I, I, I mean, he claims to be. Maybe. And he, he, you know, from one of those like asshole churches that protest like good things. Sure, sure, like, sure, like, sure. The, like the, the, they show up at like soldiers' funerals and say rude shit. You know, the, you ever yeah. you've seen those yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's at yeah. Spot, do you have the volume? The little kids were online. Here for Last Frontier Evangelism, and uh, today we're at the mall in Amarillo, Texas, and we're going to tell the children here today the truth that there is no Santa Claus. I'm even done here. What is this a shit? No, right? he starts shouting out, and the little kids are like, "What? They're what? online to meet Santa Claus." <laughs> And he's like, uh, Santa's not real. And, and pe- yeah, his look, parents there, confront them. Spot to go. He was born in a manger in a small town called Bethlehem. And that's the truth about Christmas. The man you're going to see today is just a man in a suit. What a piece of shit. Like I don't know, Santa, honestly, I don't know what I would do if he said that in front of my I'm surprised. Right? I'm surprised uh, no one on that line physically like yeah. went up to him and tried to remove him. Oh, my husband. I want to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to beat up. Down. If <laughs> yeah. he made my son cry or made him upset or question Without that. Without a doubt. No way. I want to beat up little kids that try to pull that shit with my kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, Let alone some grown ass dude. That's the word. Do you remember how you found out? Do you remember? Uh, I, what age? So I grew up Jewish, so I didn't really oh, right. like have a ton of Christmas, but like I, I was on to it. My you weren't dad, the kid that ruined it for other kids. No, though, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. I was very respectful of people's <laughs> beliefs and whatever right. made them happy. But I, my dad would dress up and I knew it was him. And um, like, I remember I would get one present on Christmas morning and like my dad would leave a recording as if he was Santa. And I oh, that's so boy. sweet though. It was so oh, sweet. Right. But my son fully believe I mean he's three and a half he's like all about Santa he's super excited so I ordered a ton of his gifts on Amazon right and he's obsessed with hockey my son right he's obsessed like on the ice already like in a little league he's three and a half but so the, we sent we ordered all these gifts like I got him like um, a shooter tutor like those goals that have the holes in them so he can shoot the pucks and it's the box is not in like a brown Amazon box it was like showed what it was and it was on our front oh, step. No. And he was like, did Santa bring my presents oh, already? And I was the like, worst. no, Bo, it's just a picture. There's just like, there's like bananas in there. Oh, and, oh, son of a- and he's like, obviously not believing me at all. Oh. And I was just yeah, but so he's three. You, you could finagle your way out of this. I'm are hoping you, he's going to forget oh, by for next sure. week. You haven't gotten right? lazy yet, right? You're st- are you still doing all the, like you said, parents uh, eventually, usually sometimes people find out because their parents get lazy. Like one, handwriting. Like, you're, like, you're like, wait, that's, dad, that's my dad's, dad's handwriting. handwriting or, yeah. or, well, you know. here's what my husband and I are actually having an argument about this because I didn't grow up with Christmas and right. he did. Is he, he like, feels what do you like know? a know it all. You so don't he know was like, anything. Santa doesn't wrap presents. Everything is just out. Oh, wow. No. My, and I'm like, wait. I think that's just because like, your husband's dad, I don't think Lenny Dykstra wrapped <laughs> presents. That's, <laughs> that's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, he's probably just throw them there on the floor. I, throw them there on the floor. I could pretty much like guarantee you that Lenny's probably never wrapped a present oh, in his life. That's so funny. But so we're doing half and half because I was like, wait, but like part of it, he's like, nothing is from us. It's all from Santa. I was like, no, 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 no. I have to get credit for some of this. You stuff. know what, though? That That's probably his family's tradition. Yeah. And I have heard that before. Yeah. You know, and some people do things Christmas Eve and some people do things Santa for Christmas morning and right. everyone has their own thing but yeah my my family santa always wrapped the presents you know yeah. so yeah isn't like part the excitement like trying to like yeah. figure out what's inside yeah, absolutely. The paper open. Yeah, absolutely without a doubt well that's um, cool that you're you're running with his tradition that's nice of you too yeah uh, we're gonna do a little bit of both right you when, know when you you uh you're a new york girl yeah so are you live you're living out here right now i've no? been here for nine years right yeah now I have a, we were talking about this earlier in the show is there is there part of you that's a bummer that you never really get the host shit because here you are out here 
Do, can you, your whole family, will they By come the way, out? No, but this is the first year they are. So we just moved to a new house and a bigger house. Yeah, so you need to be a guest room. You need yeah. to have a big ball. But it house. took a while. Like, no one's come to see me. So my parents are coming for Christmas. And then my brother has four kids. So I understand it's hard for them to come, but they're coming the end of January. Is that stressful for, like for you years. or exciting that or both? Four, that all four kids are coming? No, it's just like stressful. the whole family. You know, you never know no, if you come up in it. conversation. No, yeah. my family, we're not like that. You're, you're all excited cool. about yeah, it. Yeah, everyone's like getting their own vices of to chill out. Right. And, you know yeah. what I mean? Because right, you just want peace and everyone be happy and get along. And, you know, that's all I hope for this holiday season. That's cool, though. It's so, all focused on the kids, which sort of takes everything off everybody. Else. Do you yeah. still, uh, to, to wrap up some of the dumb conversations we had recently, yeah. adult to adult presents anymore, or is it all about the kids? Like, uh, do, you, do you have to still buy, like, um, Uncle Earl a, a Christmas present? No, like, some like random... between my brother and I, we only get each other's kids presents. Exactly. Okay. But, like, my husband and I got him some stuff, and I'm hoping he got me right right are you do you have to do all the cooking and everything like i do i love cooking oh you're good you're a good cook yeah and i mean i don't know if i I mean i'm everyone eats it so i guess i'm okay (laughs) got no (laughs) choice you never know told you otherwise i have i have like certain dishes that like are are always a hit yeah but i try and incorporate well let's hear what's your favorite dish let's see spot our producer spots good i make a um a chicken buffalo dip like for when people first get there okay all right i'm feeling that that's always that's always a winner it's always a clean plate okay the whole thing's gone all right what's the Um, entree here i make a turkey um sweet potato casserole some veggies and stuff and then i for some reason later it's like people want something different so i always make chicken parm Oh chicken yeah, I love it. That winner. would be for me. That's a good, I love it's a good that. It's, it's like nice the little, easiest thing for it's me. It's a nice, to make. It's nice it's such spread. An easy thing to make. I love it. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Now, before you got here too, Jamie Lynn Sigler on the Cavino and Rich show. Her first time on a show on the West Coast. Um, you're home of nine years. Yeah. Yeah. So we're still adjusting and getting used to this. Um, Realizing that we're soft, like going back to the East. I'm leaving right after the show now to go back to New York and I almost forgot my jacket. I'm like, fuck a jacket. Oh, you're gonna freeze no your ass off. Who wants to wear a jacket? My mom keeps telling me it's seven degrees. Get soft out here, quick. yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, you do. We're excited about the holidays. We were just talking, however, though, about um, disrespect in relationships and and sharing things with people. I want to know how you felt about this because we feel like not all women are culprits, but mostly women are are culprits here. I want to know how you feel when a guy wants to show you a movie or something he's into, mm-hmm. and you don't put the phone down, or, or you, you still got the MacBook on your lap, and you're right. making it seem like, oh yeah, I could watch Game of Thrones and be on yeah. my computer at the same time. I'll show her the meme. It goes like this. Look at the sad Kermit. <laughs> <laughs> when you show people a movie you love and they don't pay attention or react to any of these important scenes. I have to send that to my husband. This is a big story. It's on us. our Instagram page if you want to borrow okay, it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Isn't this the highest form of disrespect from both sides? Maybe your husband. If you were the talking to Cutter, yeah. then yeah, he would feel that way because like he's the guy that will show you something and then watch you the whole time. Right. He wants to just see you enjoy it. And I'm, you know, look, by the end of a day, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I've like put my kid to bed, right, I've done right. everything around the house. I just want to play Candy Crush, like and <laughs> sit on relax. the couch in like my blanket and chill with my dog on my lap. And I, I love Ray Donovan. That's what we're into right now. Mm-hmm. We, every night we get a Ray Donovan in. We're but you don't need on. to focus but just on like, Ray Donovan. I can, I'm a woman. I can multitask. Oh, and I, that's, that's the number one answer on the board. I'm, I'm a I, woman. I can multitask. It's true. Yeah. I, then hold on. I could probably have to compromise. retain more information of what happened in that episode than he did while well, playing. We're going to tell crush. Cutter this. Next time you say, wait, what just happened? We're going to say, too bad. For sure. You shouldn't be on your phone right now looking at shoes. Respect. Right. Get it. Respect. Got it. Stop okay. crushing candy. And, and we yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the, the number one form of disrespect yeah. is when someone's trying to show you something and the person walks away and you say, I'll pause it. And they go, no, no, don't worry. You can keep it playing. Oh, that's hard. That, that's, that's, pretty hard. Much, that's, that's pretty much that's, that's pretty much saying like, whatever you show me, I don't give it's, a shit about. It doesn't mean anything to me. Doesn't mean yes, a- I get that. I totally get that. I wanted to ask you this. Um, so basically, don't do that. Don't do that to anybody. I know. Yeah. Okay, I'll be yeah. I'll be better. And, about and it. you know what? To 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 make it seem like you actually do care when you get up, be like, yeah, you pause it. I'll be right back. You're like, oh wow, she, she doesn't want to miss it. Mm, she this is great. All right, she's well, buying into it. We're relating here, <laughs> and it goes both ways. Of course, of course. Um, but what about when it comes to your projects? Mm-hmm. How, how do you 
expect people to react like, to that. Like your new movie, right. Loserville. When this, when I don't it, watch anything I'm in, so I don't care if so anyone you, I know watches Really? It. You don't ever, like, hey, wa- even with your family or parents or anything, like, hey, guys, let's check it out. Like, you want no involvement <laughs> no, in that. No, I feel like the only reason any of, like, my friends or family know anything I'm in is because my mother posts everything on Facebook. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big self-promoter. Mm-hmm. And I just... It's I don't know maybe I'm self deprecating whatever but I don't want to know anyone's opinions. Well, hold like, on if you if you're doing a movie like I said the new movie is called Loserville we'll talk about it. Yeah. I But rewind a minute when you're when you're on The Sopranos and that's what people are talking about because that's the show that everyone's watching on a Sunday night. You ignore that phenomenon because I don't want to watch myself. No, no. Okay. I mean, look, no, that was different. <laughs> that was I was oh, gonna yeah. say like every, when everyone's talking about it and you're part of it, you can't not watch it. Well, I didn't have to tell anybody to watch it. I mean, everybody, yeah, everybody you know what I mean? I have to be like, hey, guys, tune in for our mm-hmm. little show. We hope we make it. You know, it was <laughs> it was uh, it was what it was. And so, uh, you know, that was but I haven't seen all of them. I've only seen the first two episodes of every season because that's when they were the premieres. Oh. And uh, that's it. So my husband and I actually said when we're done with Ray Donovan, uh, we might actually watch The Sopranos because it's been enough time that I, I can look at it like I was a little kid then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and appreciate it. it yeah, in so a it doesn't way. feel like I'll judge myself. Right. You know yeah. what? I'm not sure if we've seen you since uh, the great James Gandolfini passed away. No. Uh, I mean, was that, that was hard. You guys, I'm guessing, were close on yeah, that set, right? Yeah, That was heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah that yeah. sucks. I, Sorry. It's okay. You know, yeah. it was, um, I mean, devastating and, and shocking and, uh, but it was a very surreal experience. I was about seven or eight months pregnant at the time, and um, his funeral is going to be in New York. And so HBO got a plane, for, like a private plane for everybody that was in L.A. to fly us. So I was able to go. And I hadn't seen some of these people since we wrapped the show. And, um, you know, to sort of all be in black and be in the viewing room with him and our Sopranos family, it almost felt like, an episode of the show. Yeah, I could just oh, picture yeah. Polly like Walnut there with his head down. Like and... a, it was a funeral fit for a king, which he was. Wow. You know, and it was just a surreal thing where it was like, I remember I looking at Edie and she looked at me and she was like, this could have been the fucking finale. Do you know oh what I mean? Oh my like, God, it's so here weird. Here you are pregnant and, yeah. and this and we're all here and just mourning like, like he wow. was the sun and we were the planets all around him. You know, he was, he was the show. And so it was, it was beautiful and awful and all of those things, but we were all there. And so to kind of go through that together, yeah. it was must have um, been surreal for sure and easier. And you wow. see a lot of that sympathy now from the people that worked with Alan Thick. you know, oh, like I that know. was another, that's another bummer. I, as I, that was such I had a the bummer. pleasure to know, uh, to like know him. I went to his house for dinner with him and his wife a couple of years ago. Oh, He's my really God. close with one of my best friends and, just the nicest, nicest, nicest guy. Something so charming about him too. Like he, he didn't so take himself charming. serious, right? We, so charming. Well, we would, Jamie, nice yes, to see you. We, we, would, yeah. we would do, yes. we would do Very Alan Thicke, and, no, and when and when he was on our show, we were like, we do impressions of you, and he got a kick out of it. Like, right. so, yeah, I mean, we uh, no ego about that guy. No, none. What a great guy. None. And he was like a, a America's TV. You know what? We we realized here on the show. Um, Bill Cosby had that title for all those years. Yeah. And and you know what? It kind of stole the shine from Alan Thick because really he was America's TV dad for our generation. Mr. Without a doubt. Yeah, yes. of course. I Without loved that show. Without a doubt. That was Love. our show. I, I quit TV, I think, right around that show. Like, he said that. Yeah. yeah. Network TV. Network and then TV. Got, thanks to your show. You know, that Rock changed that changed cable TV, yeah. you know, forever, I think. All right, well, let, let's brighten up the mood for a second, because yeah. since the last time we saw you on a, on a, on a, on a fun, ridiculous eye rolling note, since the last time we saw you, your father in law is all over the place. <laughs> Lenny Dykstra has become I'm, I'm a huge Mets fan. I grew up in New York, uh-huh. much like you. So he was one of my childhood oh, heroes. Yeah. He was a blast on our show recently, too. I mean, he, he was hilarious oh, he when he was here. Yeah, yeah, he was cool. hilarious when he was here with us. You hear the clips on Howard Stern all the time. Uh-huh. Oh, and by is, the way, you got to ex- explain like how surreal that is. Again, for us, Rich's last hurrah as a baseball fan was in 86. Yeah, I, I mean, so yeah. for me, I grew up in my heroes were Lenny Dykstra, Gary Carter, sure. Daryl Strawberry. Sure. All those. That was, you know, we grew up around the same yeah. time and everything. So yeah. we're both when, East Coast guys. When I, when I see Lenny emerge now on our show and on Howard and, and really just being hilarious, that's your father-in-law. Is is this the is that the real Lenny Dykstra or is he just is he a clown like that all the time? He's hilarious. Lenny is very uh, very respectful around me, and even Cutter will say he's like my dad really respects you because he he buttons up for me, I, and he doesn't have to. Like, right. I'm yeah. like a guy's girl. Like let's like talk about it, hang out, whatever. But he's very very respectful around me. Um, he loves my buffalo chicken dip. 
he, you know, he, he well, might, no. my son is, is, you know, idolizes him, you know, because he knows, like, he calls him Goody. Like, Goody played baseball. And so he's, he's a good dad. And, like, I've, I've heard him with my husband have really great, Heart to heart talk. So mm-hmm. you know, I know the Lenny that that's you know on Howard side. Stern. Right, right. But you, I hear, I I can't listen. To I would say you don't hear this. <laughs> Especially stuff. the last hurrah that was the on la- there. But I do can't. your girl, do your girlfriends come up to you and ask I have, these things? No, or, but or I have one things? girlfriend who I love very much. Who's like, <laughs> we call her like the twisted sister, and she listens to Howard Stern every day. Right. She was like, she called me and she's like, did you hear Lenny? I was like, no, no, no. But I heard. And what do you do? Do you take a deep breath and like, oh, I hope it's not too bad? Or do you just No, tell I was prepared. He told Cutter what he was going to be talking about. And which, what does your husband say about it? Does he think it's that's hilarious? That's his, that, or, I mean, honestly, I think at this, I mean, all he could do is laugh. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's, you know, what can he say? You know, his dad is who he is. Exactly. He, they've had a lot of ups and downs in his life and as a family. And it's, he has a really good attitude about it. And I think, you know, there's so many uptight pe- there's so many uptight people that the Lenny Dykes is refreshing, to be honest. <laughs> like honestly, think about like and, and there's no pressure on you. I always think of it yeah. this way. My my wife's dad is the most relaxed guy that is you know how some people have in laws that are strict pain in the asses that you would you would not want to be around? Yeah. Like my my wife's dad just sits around playing the guitar, smoking weed, and he's like retired. Like, That's often. It's, it's, you, he can never judge me because he's like a grown up boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like yeah. I, I could relate in that sense that like, you know. You never have to worry about what you say around your in-laws. No, that's for <laughs> sure. But I'm very grateful that Cutter's much more like his mom. <laughs> oh, all oh, right, good. It works out for you. How yeah. about your but, family? But, do but they you have say the, uh... anything about it, or like, because obviously it's a joke. Or do they get, or do they just get like, I mean, he's Lenny Dykstra. Right? The guy's yeah. a rock star. Whatever. I yeah. get it. Well, you know, it's like funny. It's like when Lenny met my dad. It was right after um, my son was born. They both came over my house and. My dad is 69 years old and like a little boy. Like right. mm-hmm. plays like tries to get the guys in his neighborhood to like get like let's play roller hockey. Like he's like a kid. And so he's in really good shape and I remember like the first thing Lenny asked my dad was like, "So what do you take to like look like that? Like what what do you want? What kind of <laughs> what kind of what kind That's of funny. sauce are you on?" And my dad was like, "You want the sauce? You want the sauce? What do you take? Yeah, what, do you you what do you want? What do you want? Wow, you, you get, guys do good Lenny. I can Lenny's get you some good thing. stuff. I can get you good stuff. What do you want? What do you want? What do you take? Yeah, the, uh, That's so funny. So what did your dad? Did he like, have yeah. his teeth in when he was here? I don't. Yeah, he did. Did he? Yeah, yeah he looked he good. He looked good. He's still in good shape. I was gonna say he does look good. He's solid. You know, he's a solid guy. He might want to lose the mustache though. Oh yeah, he had the creepy mustache. He had the mustache. Oh, I haven't seen him in a minute. Yeah, mustache. <laughs> but I'll tell you what though. Out of all this though, between you saying your your husband, your father in law, your father, yeah. Bo is destined to be an athlete. Your son. 1, I mean, you're saying he's three years old it's playing hockey. All it's, he does. He's going to be play hockey or baseball. It's yeah, how do you get on the does. skates? Is your husband into that? Or are you my into dad's that? a. My husband loves the Kings. Oh, and my okay. dad is a diehard Rangers fan. And when we're in New York, my dad takes him to Ranger games. Wow. And so you have like hope. Like, I'll be like, Bo, do you want breakfast? He's like, no, no, no. Ask me, McDonough, do you want breakfast? And I'm like, okay, McDonough, who plays for the Rangers. Yeah. Or he's like, or, call me Henrique. Oh, he's way, oh, he's he's way he's in. in. And he's only three? Yeah. And he can skate. Yeah, See, I mean, me, barely. Better, 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 I mean, he's learning. You, oh, for sure. <laughs> That's because we didn't grow up on skates, so I'm I'm terrible. Are you any good at it? No, oh, okay. I'm horrendous. Yeah, she can do a triple he, lutz. She can be a figure know. skater. Maybe but he, he, like, marches right, right now. Right, right, right. He's learned how to fall. We've mastered that. I mean, it's, it's still baby stuff, yeah, yeah. but he's on the ice twice a week. So, so you know, because we're running out of time. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so what's going on now? Yeah, yeah. You, you're doing the MS Awareness Campaign. Yeah. you got a movie. Like, what's, what's going on in your world? Sure. So right, primarily this year has been, you know, since coming forward with the fact that I live with relapsing multiple sclerosis, um, it's sort of been um, a big step for me, but a good one because it's it's been something I've living with for 15 years. And so I have a lot of experience and, you know, I felt like it was time to come forward and just sort of own it and and see what life had to offer with that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It just, I think I thought that everything was going to be taken away and sort of living in denial secrets can keep you sick and make you even more sick. And I just wanted to, you know, be a good example for my son eventually as he gets older and be aware that no matter what our circumstances, we're all deserving of opportunity. Yeah. And, and so I teamed up with Biogen this year and we launched this reimagine myself campaign. And so it's all about sort of reimagining your life, living with MS and sort of all the 
things that I've learned over the years to reimagine motherhood or, you know, parenting or, or work or just everyday things. You know, I have my limitations and I have things that I live with that are unfortunate, but I, I have to keep living. Yeah, life of course. And driving as best I can. And so and you're helping out those people yeah. um, and, where you were 15 years ago. And what, you know? What's great about Absolutely. the campaign is that a lot of times you don't really, you don't know about something unless it affects you. And that's, that's, sad, that's the sad truth. So you don't really investigate something until it affects you personally. So yeah. getting the word out there for people that it doesn't affect to just help out and, you know, understand what's going on. Right. Yeah. And you can feel really alone yeah. when you deal with something like that. You can feel like nobody understands. So I think even just having a voice, for people that kind of suffer in silence, it's, you know, the the emotional part I think we can all connect on. Reimagine myself and the new film Loserville. Look out for that, Loserville. And uh, hit her up at Jamie L. Sigler on Twitter. Jamie L. Sigler. Uh, it's so nice to see you. You're always so welcome nice here. We're out here in California nice now. Yeah, we're out here. You know, tell people to come by. You're always welcome. And we'll see Thank you Monday. You. Until then, Arriba there, baby. See you in the promised land. Goodbye.